Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about a monofilament versus steel. This is the leading cause of knife fights amongst musky fly anglers, uh, aside from catch and release practices. I'm breaking this down into two episodes. This episode is going to be about bite guards or your tippet section and also how your leader reacts underwater, what it does to your fly while you're fishing it. The next segment of the leader videos is going to be about length, which is the most critical part of your musky leader. Before I get in too deeply about the construction of musky fly leaders, I want to talk about beginners real quick. Um, if you're just now getting into fly fishing for muskies, don't make the same mistakes I made. I started small and worked my way up. Start big and then work your way down when you get more experience with dealing with muskies. By big, I mean 50, 60 pound steel and 130 to 150 pound monofilament. If you're wanting to learn a lot more about fly fishing leaders and how they react in the water and why we use uh, musky leaders a certain way, this video is really designed for you. Getting back to steel versus monofilament, there is not one that's better than the other. They both have disadvantages and they both have advantages. The one disadvantage of monofilament is really obvious. You get sliced off on occasion. Your percentage with slice offs on monofilament is really low, but it's there. It's high enough to cause an effect and it's high enough to cause you to not fish that pound of leader anymore. And everything is fine and dandy until it happens. Your odds are really, really close to zero when you're fishing 150 pound monofilament. There are also some disadvantages of steel. Uh, steel likes to sink because it's a very dense material and because of that if you're not fishing over deep water If you're fishing really close to uh, shorelines or humps or whatever your knots and your fly will bump more rocks That will wear the nylon off of the steel leader thus making your fly come untied because steel doesn't really grip to steel that well check your knots often and when I say often I mean once like every 30 40 casts uh, if you feel a few bumps or something like that check it just I mean, it's not very hard to do. It takes three seconds. Plus, you can also check if your fly is fouled on, on occasion. There are also very good advantages to using both steel and monofilament. There is no winner here. In order to illustrate those advantages, we're going to the whiteboard. Steel. Steel has its advantage when you're fishing deeply. Every time you begin to retrieve your rod, your line is, or your, your leader and line are in a straight line. Uh, there's the end of your steel leader, and here is your fly line. As soon as you stop retrieving, gravity and resistance start to take effect on your line. Your line, because it's so dense, it wants to sink really fast. Uh, your monofilament does not like sinking fast, and your steel drops the head of that monofilament. This is the end of your steel leader. This is where your connection between your fly line and your butt section is. Fishing steel works great in fast retrieve situations and it also works great in slower, deeper, more vertical presentations, which is what I'm going to show you right here. Because your leader sinks, uh, as soon as you stop, it puts rotation on your fly. So your fly just kicks down every time you pause. That's simply because the line in front of the fly, although not heavier, is more dense. There's less resistance in it, so it sinks a little bit faster, so you get that kick down. Your monofilament, there is more resistance in this section right here, in your monofilament, so this stays kind of lifted here. After you pause and you start to retrieve this again, you're, this isn't just going to straighten out and you start retrieving it upward. What's going to happen uh, because of this downturn in the fly and the weight of the leader, your fly is going to take more of an arcing position. So it's going to have more of a vertical presentation. Uh, and, and that's where it really has its main advantages. I feel like when you're fishing down a little bit deeper, you want that vertical presentation rather than a lateral presentation. Now, one of the major disadvantages of this, of having all this mass in front of the, the fly, is that you do lose all your lateral movement. Uh, in fact, your fly does move laterally, but it always head dips down laterally. So it's always, you know, it's going up and then head dipping down. Uh, and that's just how it works. The steel in front of the fly is dual purpose uh, because you're fishing like with 400 grain, 500 grain lines. If you're fishing with a, a 40 pound leader, it doesn't really affect it too much. However, if you're fishing with a 75 pound to 90 pound, leader you're adding more mass to the fly so you can actually get down deeper with a heavy leader 
and a heavy fly line. Does that cover it? Monofilament. Mono is kind of the same way. You're retrieving, it's a straight line, here's your fly, there's the end of your mono bite section, here's your belly section, and there's your fly line right there. Now when gravity and resistance start to affect this, this is your greatest amount of resistance here, and it continues through here. And your greatest amount of density is on this end. So this is gonna to wanna to go down, these are gonna to wanna to stay afloat. Your line travels down, uh, and here you have the connection with the leader, and then your leader arches up. Here's your fly, there's the end of your monofilament bite section, now the advantage to this is that you don't have that vertical presentation. There's not enough resistance here to keep this bend in your line. The fly won't follow that. It'll just, it'll ride at more of a level path. Because of that, you can hang this fly in the strike zone of a fish for a longer period of time. The main advantage of monofilament is that when you pause, your fly doesn't turn down. So if a muskie is right behind it, which happens a lot, um, and you stop, it's not gonna dip down in front of them, it's gonna hang in that same spot. And you can kind of gauge what the muskie is doing, take it away from them, and as soon as you stop it at, at a distance away from the fish, that is when they make the decision to eat. If the fly was sinking down, I've had way too many fish just overshoot flies uh, because the fly did something that they weren't expecting. If you're fishing steel, that your fly is going to be moving and then stop and drop and your muskie is going to just run railroad right over the top of it and you'll miss it. So monofilament does have its benefits, especially in shallow water, especially when you're fishing really slow. And it also doesn't kill your lateral movement. Uh, when you stop the fly, it typically will dart to the left or right. It will ride up, it will ride down. There's just all kinds of directions it can go because it's not being pulled down by a steel leader. So you don't get that vertical presentation out of mono, but you do get the lateral presentation out of mono. And that is really key when you're fishing slow and when you're fishing in shallow water. That covers that. All right, whoa, what the heck? Much better. These are all bite guard materials. This is 130 pound monofilament, this is 90 pound steel, and this is 40 pound steel. You can see them all. The fish can see them all. When they're underwater, you can still see them. There is neither that's more or less visible. It's all the same. I really wanted to get the mono versus steel thing out of the way because if you're using the proper materials, neither one is ever better than the other. And you have to take into the equation that everybody's got their style and that everybody can fish a different way and can fish successfully uh, a different way. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you in, well, I'll see you tomorrow, but I'll see this camera in like five minutes. Where is the end of this? Okay, mark a disadvantage for mono here, because for some reason I cannot find, it must be buried, there it is.